Hey guys, how are you doing? Happy Friday. Um, this is going to be a really fun one. I'm excited for showing you guys how to do the um, daisy chain stitch. So there's lots of different variations of daisy chain. And um, this is a version that I think is kind of like a square shape. And I like it because there's no gaps in between the daisies. Now that's like a different look than your usual daisy chain, but can be really cool, especially as a stacker bracelet. Um, that said, you can make it into other stuff, choker necklaces, earrings. Um, there's a really beautiful post by Maria showing some earrings that she's already made. So if you want a, some inspo there, you can check that out. Um, but what I'm going to show you guys today is just the structure of the stitch. I'm going to um, do a, a couple starts so that you can get the hang of it. And um, this is super beginner friendly. Um, we're going to be working with a nice thick thread and some size eight seed beads. So on the mat, what I've got, I'll show you guys the, um, the setup here. And so this one is um, the three samples that I've done, all with size eight seed beads. And the colors that I used, um, they're all in the handout. So if you like these colors and you want to do the same ones, you can make them um, from what's in the PDF. You'll find those in the table of contents here. And what these numbers are, someone asked me recently, so I, I realized I never point out in class, but these numbers are the numbers you can put in the app. If you type that in, the item will come up in the app and you can add it to your cart. And then you can check out, have it sent to you, or you can go to the store and pick it up, which is what I usually do. Um, we're going to be using, in addition to that, some beading thread. And in all of my samples here, I use the frost color. Um, but today I'm going to work with black so you can see the stitching a little better because this thread kind of disappears on the mat. So I'll be working um, with the same size, but just in black today. You'll need some basic stuff like some scissors to cut your thread. And then right at the end, you'll need a pair of chain nose pliers. And I'll be working with my, uh, I usually use a set of both chain nose and bent nose. And I use those to open and close my jump ring. Um, and then you'll need a clasp. So the jump rings and the clasp, they come in, there's lots of colors. I used a lot of my gold ones on the samples you see here. Um, but there's also silver. And then you can just grab some five, six millimeter jump rings in whatever finish you want that matches. Um, and then also another really great question that I got um, earlier about this class was um, if you could just skip doing the jump ring and just go directly to the class because of the way this, you see how that has a little loop on it. It's not super far off from the size of a size eight seed bead. See how close they are? So how cool, like you could just stitch it in. And I'll, I'll talk about that when we get to this part of the demo because I think that's a great possibility. Okay, so let's dive in. I'm gonna grab my, um, my wildfire. I'm gonna grab some scissors and we're gonna cut about, if you're doing a bracelet that's about the same length of these, these are uh, about seven inches or so, you'll need about 75 inches of beading thread. We're gonna be leaving a 10 inch tail. So that's a wingspan plus a little more for most folks. Let's go ahead and cut that. I do think it's uh, another one where you can add thread if you wanted to do something really long, that's totally possible. And I'm flattening the end of my wildfire. For anybody new, we do this almost every class because wildfire can be flattened thin, almost as thin as paper. See how thin that got? And we can get that into our needle a lot easier that way. And I didn't mention needles yet, but I am working with a size 10 beading needle. And then you'll just wanna bring down about seven inches of your thread and fold it over just so you can have something to pinch here, but it is worked on a single strand. All right, and so I was thinking since it's St. Patrick's Day, I'll work with the green color, and then that way I can introduce um, how I got this bracelet made. So you'll notice in this bracelet, it's all one solid green. Well, I picked out the greens from this mix, which is the retro blue mix. You can see those little greenies in there. So I'm just gonna do that same thing again today. So this is our outer color, but with mixes like this, one of the things that I'd like to do um, is to do one that uses all the colors in the mix. Like every other flower, you change the color. That would be cool with like the Hawaii mix or something. I was thinking about that earlier today. And then for my center, I was trying to match the daisy flower earrings that we did from last week, the Marta jewelry pattern. And so these were the colors in that. And so I pulled out the green and the white. 
So this one is just a perfect compliment if you made the earrings with us last week. Okay, so there are our two colors of beads. This is gonna be our center and these are gonna be our outside. And again, I'm gonna be picking the little green ones out of there. It also has a really beautiful, um, like a transparent aqua and it has a transparent silver lined sky blue. So fun to play with those. All right, so let's dive in. So again, we've got 75 inches of thread. I threaded a size 10 beading needle and I'm gonna leave a 10 inch tail on this first step. Meaning when I add all these first beads, I'm gonna slide them down to the bottom until I've got seven inches left of my thread. And at that point I'll start working my stitch. So that's what it means when, uh, when we say how much tail to leave. So let's pick up six beads and I'm gonna just kind of pick for the green ones here. There's four. And um, sorry, let's pick up eight beads. It's six beads um, moving on from step two, but we need eight beads to start. Let's make sure I've got the eight. There's eight and I grabbed an extra. All right, so eight beads. And what we're gonna do, ignore the center bead for now. We're just gonna string all uh, these eight beads in a square. It'll look like a ring for the first part. We're gonna reinforce it and go all the way around. And then we're gonna exit back from the first bead. And that'll be easy to find because it's the bead that has the tail coming out. So you'll know which one it is. And again, so getting that 10 inch tail here, which we'll use to add our clasp later. So there's the eight beads. Okay, let's go back through all the beads. And so it'll form a little ring. And I'm gonna go through all the beads again. And it's starting to take on the shape that we like, the little one where there's kind of like two, two, two. And all right, so we're getting almost back around. I'm gonna make sure that I exit from the bead that my tail's coming out of. So I'm gonna keep going through the ring. And we're gonna exit from the one the tail is exiting from. So we strung all those and went through it again. And there we go, we just got a little loop there. So now we need our center color. Let's grab the center bead. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna skip over the center. And there's a couple ways to visualize it that can help you do it quick. Um, you can count, of course. Count over one from the one you're exiting. One, two, three, four beads and go through the fourth, heading up in the same direction your head's heading out of the bead. Your bead is heading, sorry, your thread is heading out of the bead. Or you can just kind of visualize like, here's the top, right? And this is the side the bottom and the side. And you wanna, if you're exiting from this one, diagonally jump over and exit from that one. And again, that's just the fourth beat away from the one that you're exiting. It'll become uh, really super easy to visualize after a few stitches too. And there you go, so there's the first baby. You can pull everything, tighten it all up. And from here, what we're going to do is from here on, on forward, it's um, adding six beads. So we started with eight, and I always get this mixed up in my head. I say it wrong, but then I do it correct in my hands. It's super weird. But eight beads to start, and now all the other stitches only need six, because they're each one is going to borrow the ones from before. And in case you want to see the visual, we did all that. And then we exited from the fourth bead, one, two, three, fourth bead over here. And now we're gonna add six more and we're gonna exit from that bead after we reinforce it. So let's grab six more. And it's pretty green color. Dropped one there. So six beads. And from the one you're exiting, come back through the one just below it and continue through the one you're exiting. So you're gonna go through the two beads there. And then pull tight. Let's go all around.
And I think what I'm going to do is just show a few more um, stitches and then we'll just start it right from the beginning again. Because from here on, it's just the same thing. So I went around and now I'm exiting from this bead here, which is the one that is was the bottom one when we first did our connection. And we'll pick up another white bead. Count four, one, two, three, and four. And we'll go up through that fourth bead right there. Every time you do that, you're gonna add another flower with a little center in it. It works up pretty fast because size eight seed beads, they go really speedy. Okay, let's do one more and then we will, we'll go back to the beginning. Here's six more beads. I think, I hope I need one more. Just making sure I've got six on there. And again, just take a look at where your thread's coming out and go through the bead that's just below it, below the one your thread is exiting. And just head up through that one, kind of visualizing it as like the side of a square. And then pull up and go all around. And again, I'm exiting from that bottom bead. It's the one we went through first when we first added all six beads. Pick up one seed bead here, skip over, and we'll go up through the fourth bead. So we count over one, two, three, four, and we're going up through the fourth bead there. So that's it in a nutshell. You would basically repeat that on um, until you're ready to add your class. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of go back in time just to the very first one and start again so everyone can see the steps one more time. And let's go ahead and just grab another strand. Move the needle off that one. I'm not cutting the full length here, but you would be cutting about 75 if you want to make a bracelet, 75 inches. And here's that trick again for getting a needle threaded easier, is to take the end of that wildfire thread and then just flatten it down. And grab your beading needle, size 10 hard beading needle, and back through the eye there. It'll go really easy once you've done that flat track where you flatten the end. And now we're ready to start again. Okay, so again, leaving that 10 inch tail, you wanna string eight beads. So there's our eight beads right there. Bringing that down to where we've got about, about 10 inches left over here and come back through all those beads. And so there's one repeat. I tend to go around an extra time on the first one just because it's the one that is going to be receiving the most like stress later when we have the clasp on it. Sorry, I lost my needle really quick. Okay, so we're getting back to where we started. All right, so we're about to go through the one that our tail's exiting. That's the one we wanna be exiting from. So there we are, just a ring of eight beads. That ring of eight beads has been reinforced. And then I went and went, went around one more time to exit from the same bead that my tail is coming out of. All right. And so from here, we're just going to pick up our center bead, which is our white bead here. 
And I'm just going to jump over the center and go through the fourth beat on the other side. So we're going to just count from where we are right here. One, sorry, one, two, three, and four beads. And we'll go up through that fourth bead. And then just pull tight. So there's your first flower. Let's get six more beads. And one thing that I was just noticing that might actually confuse you if you're working with it is it kind of, it flipped in my hand to where it was like this. That's okay. You just have to remember to come through from the top, but um, it can help if you just take a look at your tail to know where you are. If you want it to match the diagram as, as it's being shown in the PDF, it's being shown in this orientation where the tail is coming out this way. I think that might be where some confusion stems from is if you flip it in your hand, you're like, you're looking for, and you might go through this one, right? So double check that you're working from the same direction and then come back along and go underneath the bead that you're exiting from. That's the one you want to go through. The bead under the one your tail is coming out of and just keep going through the one your tail is exiting from. By tail, I just mean the rest of the, the back, back part of the working thread there. All right, and so there's our loop. And I'm gonna go around again. And I'm gonna continue up. And from here, we don't have a, a marker, but we can look at what's connected. And we can look at that these two are sharing, right? So take a look at the structure here where this loop is sharing these center beads. So we we know we want to go through the bottom one only, right? So we can do the center of the flower. So that's another way to just kind of visualize it where you are in space because it gets a little confusing. It's all daisy chain kind of does. And so again, we're just gonna skip one, two, three, and four and go up through the fourth bead. And it looks wonky right now, but once you get the center in there, help it sit over usually straightens out pretty good. And if it doesn't do that for you, you can help it a little bit. I may have skipped a bead back here. Yeah, I did, see? So it's gonna be a little wonky. If that happens to you, you can just come over here and pull, always take your needle off if you're gonna destruct. Let's find that little strand that jumped. Bring it out. easy to do, but also easy to fix. And again, we're just going through the bottom one of the two that are shared. Okay, and so now I'm going to pick up the center bead again. I'm going to count one, two, three, and four over. And we'll just head up through the fourth bead there. All right, so that's pretty much the whole daisy part of it. Um, we've got loads of time. I can demo again, we can maybe switch the colors up. I'm just gonna check in with Carmi and see what she thinks. I missed some of the chat a little bit. <laughs> Danielle, there the only the only issue is in the handout in the written part, you start with six beads when you oh, meant to say eight, but the eight is very, very clear in the um, visual. So oh, I see it now. Yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah, everybody caught that. And um, I think the best thing for all of us is a <laughs> third time's a charm. Show us one more time. All right, let's do it one more time. Yeah, I need an editor, you guys. <laughs> you may want to be my editor. Actually, I have Pat. Pat usually helps me with all this. She Pat caught it. Pat caught Pat it. Caught Pat it. already yeah. emailed me about it. And then I just, well, once, once they're submitted, though, it's harder to I'm back. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, do you guys like the green or do you want to see a different color come out here? We could do some purple. It's for fun. I change it. I'm running out of green beads. <laughs> so you can just grab, grab these. 
All right. Um, or again, 75 inches is how much you would need to do about a bracelet, about a bracelet length. And just trim that from the spool. Get those chain nose pliers. And we're going to flatten that in there. Danielle. Yeah, you had you have one request, and again, it'll make it look odd. But would you consider using two colors for the petals, so yeah. it, it's more obvious when you're saying four and four? Oh, that's a good idea. Here, let's grab a bunch. Let's make it all Easter colors here. I've got this one. I've got a pink. And let's make like a little wildflower garden. It'll be really cute. And now the thing that you didn't plan for will be the thing we all want to do. <laughs> right. I know, right? <laughs> well, I saw another great idea pop up that I didn't mention. Um, Maria said adding another layer. I'm already thinking on that. That's like, that's so cool. That was really cool. And yeah, if everyone can just take their hand out and step one there and just scratch that six and write an eight, because it's supposed to be eight when you start. As you get the mantra going, you'll end up with six on the brain, because that's the number that you repeat. But starts with eight here. So let's get eight beads. Bring that down, leave your 10 inch tail. And let's come up through all those beads again. All right, so there's our eight. I'm going to go around again. Keep going. And when you reach the one your tail is exiting from, just go ahead and go just through that beam. We're just going to head straight through this one. And let's use our center bead now. And we're going to skip the next four beads, so in our ring. So from the one we're exiting, we're going to count up one, two, three, and four, and head up through that one. Up is the direction that your thread's currently heading in the ring, right? Heading up. And then the center bead, you just pop right in the center like that. And there's flower one. OK, so let's switch colors. And from here on out, we're going to be picking up the six beads. There's the six beads here. And just take a look back at your first start here and look at the structure here. So you've got your, your threads coming out of the top of this bead. So you want to go through the bead below it. And just up through that bead. And I'm just going through all of them again until I reach the first one over here. So this makes it easier to see the one that's connecting. It doesn't make a full flower circle, but it's still really cute. Um, so we can go up through, oops, a little fuzzy, fuzzy focus there. Is that better? There we go. Okay. Going up through just this bead. And this is the one that was below the one we were exiting when we connected. Just through that one. Let's grab our center bead again. Count one, two, three, and four. And we'll go up through that fourth bead. So there's the second flower there. And let's do another color. Let's add six more beads. So here's six more. And then just taking a look back over here, and we're going to see that those two purples there are the left-hand side of our box, right? So uh, we're going to go through the bead that is below the one that our working thread's coming out of. Just going through this bead here. And I'm going to go through all of these again. Through one. Through the right side. 
on the bottom here. And now we're back to where we started almost. I'm gonna just go up through only that first one. Pick up our center. Count four, one, two, three, and four. All right, that looks cool. Each flower is going to have like a little half and the first one will be a full square, but it, it looks really neat. So now as you keep going, let's add a green one. I think I have enough to do another one of those. There's four. And I've got those. Let's just see how that looks. And that was six green beads. And then up through the one that's below the thread coming out. Going through all those again. And up right through here. Just that first one. And we're going to count over four and head up through this one. And there we go. So it's coming along. It looks really cute. I like that different colors. So I can go back to yellow. Um, jump in if there's we can do it one more time or um, we can start showing the class. It's, we've got plenty of time, so definitely could start again. I'm just going back through. There's my six yellow beads now. I just went back to my first color. I just need to see it. It's really, really cute looking. Hey, Danielle, I just want to let you know, everyone agrees that um, being able to see which beads are being shared is when the light bulb went, really went off that for all of us. So yeah. thank you for that, um, because um, we do have some new beaters. Um, okay. And after this, um, I think we should try uh, the clasp okay. and um, do everything we need to do for that. And then maybe we'll have time to end with one more start. Perfect. All right. Well, let's start putting the clasp on now. I'm going to grab an even different color here. Let's grab this like barley so we can see the clasp clearly different from the rest of the bracelet. So each end is the same. When you get to the end, this will be go, go the full length that you need. And when you get to the end, you'll have the same structure that we're going to use to make the loop. So you'll just want to pick up and I'll show you guys over here what that looks like. Same thing. We're just going to pick up the six beads. So here's three, four, and six. Okay. And come up through the first bead that's underneath the uh, when your thread's coming out. And there's a loop. And that's pretty much all there is to it. We're going to reinforce that loop twice. Um, twice is good since it's going to have a jump ring on there. And then when I do the other side, I'll show the alternative that was mentioned for putting the clasp on directly, if you're using the kind of clasp that we are. I just wanted to show this with the jump ring first because not everyone will be using the same type of clasp and you may need a jump ring. And so there's reinforced. I think I went through it twice or three times, I'm not sure. I lost count, but <laughs> go through that, you know, about three times. And then to weave in, all you need to do is follow the thread path through your work. So what I mean by following your thread path is, see how I was, I was here and then I just kind of traveled, sorry, traveled to the next petals here. Now I'm going to go down through these. And I'll probably just make another circle around. And this is all just the same way that the thread had gone before. We're not crossing any intersections. As they say in right angle weave, we're not going to jump from one to the other, just go where the thread already is. And if you want to, you can 
go through the centers if that's accessible from the right direction. I'll show an example of that. One through here. Through the center. And then we'll go down through this one. Yeah, and so that's pretty much all you got to do. Um, I like to change direction a minimum of three times, maybe four times, and then I'll trim my thread. And to trim it, you'll just want to take your needle off, take the thread you're cutting, and then pull up and push down. So I'm pushing down with the scissors and I'm pulling up with the thread. And now I've got my loop. And all I would need to do then is take my clasp and you can use any clasp you'd like, but I'm gonna be using one of these. Same as this on the samples. And I'll need a jump ring because I, I closed my loop already. So I'm just gonna grab one of these jump rings. It's a uh, five millimeter jump ring. Pretty much any jump ring will work, whatever you've got. And then I like to use, and this is just a style thing, um, chain nose pliers are great. I like to use a kind of a square shaped chain nose and a bent nose for my jump rings. It just makes it easier for me to see. Um, I'm gonna find the seam. And the seam on there. Open that up. And this is magnetic, so it's going to stick to your tools, but still, it's really fun. Um, and then come along and attach it in between the side two. So you've got the top, bottom, and the side two are, are these ones here. And just come along and go underneath. Connect that through. And here's where the bent nose pliers really shine, as you can just get in here and and help it close. So there's one side. Now, if you wanted to just go direct and stitch through and not have to do a jump ring, I was thinking about how to do that earlier. Um, and I decided it might be cool to replace both of the side beads. So let me show you what I mean. And again, this is just optional. You can do it the, this way is great. And this way it gives you the chance of changing the clasp out. If you want to put them on a different clasp, if you want to change it up later, it has more flexibility in that way. This way is stitched in, meaning you can't change it later. But still, it's pretty cool. Okay, so from here, I'm going to pick up what oh, I'm going to need another clasp too. Oh, no, I don't. I've got one right here. Sorry about that. The other side. Okay, so I'm picking up two. And I'm going to go through. And something you could do to make it, like if you really wanted it to sit sort of that you know see how because this one's got the the side is 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 a um, the symmetry is there you could do something like put a size 11 seed bead before and after before and after this and that would work too but sticking with what i've got on the mat i'm just putting two clasp and then two more and then i'm going to go back through the first two So there's one way, and then we would reinforce that. That looks good. So it would sit like that, and that actually looks really cute. So there's method one, or method one is this one actually, method two here. And then if you wanted to see what it would look like if we just put the size 11 beads, let me take this out. And I'm gonna pull off the clasp and those last two beads. I have some size 11s here. And this is just in response to a question I got that I thought was really good. This is a cool idea. Um, let me come up through here. Okay, clasp, or sorry, size 11 seed bead. And then I'm putting on the clasp. There's another size 11. Now let's get those two. This might fix the symmetry problem that makes it look more square, see? We'll see how that looks. That is also very cool. It's a different shape square, but it 
That works. And when you reinforce it, it'll box up quite a bit. Let's see what that looks like when I do that. Yeah, looking good. So there's a bunch of options for how to get those clasps on there. There's also at Michael's, something I really like is they make a toggle that's like this, meaning it has one of these little beads on the end that you can treat like a bead and stitch into your work. So if you see that toggle, um, we've used it in a lot of our classes in the past, it's a cute one. So you can try that. Um, but this is just one way to, that's a cute little ring. <laughs> um, that's a couple different options for clasping it. And um, before we start again, the one other question I got, and it's one that um, definitely has been, I think done before and works really well. If you can get a stretchy cord that can fit these beads, you can make a ring and it'll be stretchy and you can get it on. And even if it wasn't stretchy, let's say you just did it with a wildfire, you could still, you could still get it to work as a ring. You would just have to make it so that it fits like without needing to stretch to get over it. For me, I would need it to be stretchy because I have like big knuckles or something, but yeah, there's a lot of ways you can make this into a beautiful ring. It'll be so super cute and so nice for spring and rings are really trending right now. So they might do really well if you're selling jewelry at a booth this summer. People love to walk up and pop a ring on like that. So that is a great idea too. Um, let's go ahead, I'll, I'll get more through. Let's start again. because we have great time here. We've got another 20 minutes. Um, I'm going to just stick to the colors that are here. Danielle, yeah. do, do you do you have one of your sample bracelets there? Yeah, I've got them all, yeah. Um, would you just mind uh, showing us a measurement? Sure, yeah. Like how, how, many, how many flowers did you use? How many daisies did it take for your wrist? For mine, let's count it up really quick. It was different between two of them because the beads were just a little... Uh, so this one is um, with the clasp on it, a hair over seven. So, and I'll, I'll show you guys all of them so you can see how close they are. About seven and a quarter. Um, and then my brown one, which ended up being a, a, like a tiny, tiny bit smaller for some reason. Um, I did the same number of daisies and I'll count those here in just a sec. It comes out a, a smidge smaller. Not by much. Um, let's see this one here. Daniela, it, it almost looks like you need three, it's three daisies an inch. I think so. Yeah, it, there's there's a slight, slight variation. And it does matter what clasp you use and it does matter how you do your finish. But yeah, let's just measure daisy for daisy. One, two, three, I'm getting four with that you know fourth one being shared, but yeah, about four daisies per inch, roughly. Sorry, I'm a little low on the camera there. Um, what do you think, about four? Four on that one. Let's look here. And of course your tension is gonna make it a little different, but not, yeah, not too different. Um, yeah, four daisies per inch. So let's go over here. I'm measuring just the daisies now, so six inches before I did my clasp. Oops, lost count there. We got um, twenty-six of them. Does that sound right? I counted twenty-six. I did just eyeball it and I um, laid it on one of my bracelet design boards. So that's kind of how, how I got my sizing. I like to just kind of put them in a, on one of those little circles that they are, that they have in those boards. And then I just measure them and I'll make one that's seven and one that's six and a half. And I make seven and a half and eight. And then I've got one for everybody. Thanks, Danielle. That, those are perfect tips. Cool. Yeah, and it's a great question too. I wasn't sure if I um wasn't sure if I'd get variation. A lot of times and stuff like this, you get variation because it makes uh your tension will make a huge difference in how you stitch it up. This one doesn't seem to be as affected by that, probably because it's a little bit tight. Uh, let's see. 
let's cut another strand here. I'm not going to go the full 75 inches, but we'll just get enough to work with. Find the end here. Flatten that up. All right, and so eight beads to start. Let's start with pink tip for the first one here. So there's the eight. And bring that down, leaving a 10 inch tail over here for our clasp later. And we'll go back through all those beads again. I'm just gonna move it up a little bit. I keep sliding down off the camera there. So went back through all of them. And we'll go back through the first one here. And I didn't do my extra reinforcing this time. So let's go ahead and do that again. Let's go all the way around again. And someone pointed out this is really just right angle weave and yep. <laughs> yeah, it really is. It's just like writing a weave. It's kind of the same thing. And I went one bead too far, so I'm just going to take a look at where I am. Oh, I'm in the right place. Okay. So you want to make sure you're coming out of the same bead that your tail. So this is my tail over here. And this is now my, my working side. And I reinforced it all the way around. I just went through all, all the beads. And I do that on the first one again, because that's where, um, keep in mind when you're, when you're taking it on and off, there's going to be pressure on this one. So it's just an extra step for, for security. It'll still work even if you skip that, but it just kind of helps. Let's get our center bead in there. And then I'm going to count one, two, three, four beads and just go up through that fourth bead and pull tight. So there's the first one. And now let's pick up six beads. I'll use a new color. Let's go over to the purple here. Here's six beads and a new color. And then we're going to go up through the one below the threads exiting. So here's the exiting thread. And we just want to come up and go through the one below it and then continue through that one. Go through both of those beads. And that's your right hand side of the box there. It'll be wonky like that when you first do it. Don't worry about that. Let's go through it again. Just going to chase the ring around here. All right, and then we're back to the place we started, except for I just need to go through one more bead here. You just want to go through the first one of the two shared. And then we'll grab that center bead. And we'll count up four beads. So there's one, two, three, and four. And we'll want to come up through the fourth bead. It should sit like that. Here's six more beads. And again, we're going to take those six beads. We're going to get the needle to go right back through the one below the one our thread's coming out and then continue through the one that your thread is coming out. And then pull that into a ring. Now let's travel around in a circle through one side. Another way to do it is to count one, two, three, four. 
and there's five. This might help if you're using all one color, five, six. And here's bead number seven. Just that one right there. Center bead, and we're gonna count four. One, two, three, and four. And then just come up through that fourth bead. And there it is. So we just keep going. And every time you add a new one, it straightens out the one in front of it. And that's it in a nutshell. So any questions for me still? It's a, we've got time still. It's not not going um going as fast as some of them go so fast. Like some of you had a lot of extra good time. Danielle, um, quite a few people are gonna make earrings. Any oh, yeah, extra? Yeah. Great. Yeah, I can't wait to see that. That's really cool. And Maria did a nice pair. Hers were, and she also did the multicolor, I think. Oh gosh, I'm trying to remember um, from her post. She just posted it yesterday. And it was so cute. Yesterday or, or the day before it was on Insta. And um, there's uh, also in our Facebook group. If you look in our Facebook group, you can find it. Danielle, the one that's right in front of you, if that uh -huh. was the earring, you would just add the loop right now, right? Yeah, lots of ways. Um, I think I was going to make an earring out of it. I was, was going to stick an ear wire on. I might actually do it with size 11. I mean, it would work with the eights, no problem. But if we used size 11 CDs, let me get something darker that you can see. Let's go ahead and grab these guys here. Um, I would take and go one, two, three, I'm thinking three and then through here. And it's actually going to slide around so we could do more. Let's just see what three looks. It was able to go over them before. I don't know. Now I'm thinking maybe wire guardian. I'm not sure. Let's try it with the size eights at the top. That way the uh, ear wire will not slide on us. Let's try that. It's a great idea. So I'm just backing back out of all those 11s. Let's do this. Let's do three 11s. And then one of the size eights, my ear wire just to keep it from sliding. Uh, and then another eight. And then let's do three more of these. Oh, and it looks like a stem with this emerald color. Oh my goodness, this is cute. Okay, really glad we tried this. <laughs> That's cool. Like a little stem for it. And if you wanted, you could find the emerald of these in like one of a mix like this, or I think we have a size eight emerald. And you could put emerald here in size eight and it would really look like a stem. So that is a really good idea there. If you see it on the wall at Michael's, all the seed beads, um, this color comes in size eight. So that would be really cute. So spring. Um, I did want to show really quick some variations in case anyone wants to change it up. So um, another great question I got was, can I do this with size 11? And so that's why I brought up the 11 O's. So here's what it looks like with 11 O seed beads. It's gonna take a lot longer to get a full length, but it's really cute. Um, and just a side-by-side -side comparison there. Definitely a daintier look, but you know, you can picture that stacked. It would be very cute. For that, I use these two colors here, white pearl and uh, I used emerald in 11 O. You can also change these counts. The counts are not set in stone. So here's some changes that you can make. And one of them makes the center pop up. So, um, and like daisy chain can be played with like this. If you just wanna sit down and, and just, you know, go to town, trying your ideas, absolutely do that. Cause that's how you'll come up with something better. It's just like, that's how the, the seed beading works. So one idea leads to another, but here two things are different. I uh, reduced the count. So every time I added, I was only adding four instead of six. And I was, instead of sharing these, I was adding an extra bead in between. 
So to show you what I mean by that, this one is made that way without the counts changed. But notice how instead of the shared bead, there's another two. How I did that is I ladder stitched an additional two to the columns. And it spaces them out more. So you can see that one next to, put that one next to this one. You can see the difference there. So there's just a ladder stitch two added to the first. And that way you can get a full color, like a full round petal if you're changing up your colors like we did on this one. So option one there. And then if you add one less bead here at the top, you'll get this. And it'll make your other size eight seed bead pop out on top of the bead. It won't sink in. It'll pop out on top. So you can try that with pearls, try that with crystals. That would be very cool. And it would lift the crystals up off your wrist so it wouldn't be scratchy like a bicone. Yeah, so try these ideas. Definitely, um, you know, get your, hang, get your hang of it with this one and then like try all these others. And of course, there's always traditional daisy chain, which is a very similar, um, but there's a space of like three to five seed beads in between each daisy. Um, there's lots of tutorials out there on that. I haven't done one myself, I don't think, but we did a similar version um, a couple of springs ago. We did one with pearls. It's called uh, Daisy Chain Pearls. If you go to our blog, um, blog.johnbead.com, and search um, Pearl Daisy Chain, you'll find that one from a couple of springs ago. That one was really fun, really pretty, and it used all different size pearls. So if you're in pearls are really trending right now this year, 2023, I heard many people saying pearls are going to be like a thing, um, which is good news for me because I like them. <laughs> all right. So any more questions for me from anyone, anyone out there? Nope. <laughs> well, I guess I can just say um, thank you for, um, oh yeah, Cindy's saying to learn ladder stitch. Um, we've got we got about seven minutes. I mean, I could show on one of the ones I've got going really quick what that looks like. I could grab this one back over here. And so, for example, if you wanted to do that ladder idea from here, you just grab another needle. Okay. So we were doing just, you know, straight straight to the next one, sharing. But if you wanted to, let's use another color, you could just pick up two and come back through those two beads here, those side beads. And this is a ladder stitch right there. Come back down to this one. And then add your six. Six beads. It'll change direction on you every time if you do this, but that's okay. It's a little more advanced, but not, it's not out of the realm of beginner, I don't think. We'll come up through that bead. And now here, we're just gonna go through just that one, right? Because we're gonna do a jump with our center bead. And you'll notice I'm heading in a different direction. That's because with ladder stitch, every time it changes your uh, the direction of your path. So it's, I'm heading towards myself now. Here's my center bead. Let's count one, two, three, and four. And I want to come through that one in the same direction that my thread is coming out of the other bead, right? So it does a little zippy zigzag over. From there, you just do another ladder. Ladder to the two. And so on from there. I kind of liked this one more. Personally, my preference was this look because that to me like flows more, but it's still really cute. I mean, either way, it's going to look really cute and you can pick the one you like. And of course, try that other variation, leaving off that top bead. So yeah, um, you know, while we're still here on the mat, why don't I grab next week's class since we've got about four minutes or so before the hour. I'm going to grab the workshop for next week. So we um, have a different format for next week. It's a four, uh, sorry, four, two hour <laughs> workshop where we teach a more advanced beading technique. And it's in a, a smaller class size. So you get a lot of time to ask questions. 
and we're going to be doing something that's called a herringbone button cuff. And the herringbone is something that um, if you've been taking our classes a while, you've seen a lot. We, we do a lot of herringbone because it's just so pretty, so flowy. Uh, but for this one, we are going to add the button loop to it and then put a little button on the other side so you can clasp it. So a little bit advanced, but not too bad. I mean, I would say if you're a beginner and you just want to come and hang out with us and see how it's done, this is something you as a beginner grow into very quickly. And so you'll have the access to the replay and um, the PDF and everything from this class. So as you as you grow, you'll have this resource. So I would say come, even if you're, you're brand new to beating, you'll still enjoy it. Um, and so that's the workshop. And then in April, we're gonna be doing some peyote stitch uh, tile, like um, peyote stitch tiles is what I'm calling them, but they're really just little squares. And we're just making a bunch of different patterns for them. So. There's a bunch. Like I did, I think two dozen patterns. The first ones are up on the website. The others, I'm going to drop links in class to them. Um, I just came up with them later than this middle. I keep making more because I really enjoy it. So there are lots of flowers. This is just some of the flowers. You've got a few that are in process here for my demoing. Like there's a rose, there's a Super Mario flower, so many. And then it's a two-part class where part one, we're going to show you how to do this peyote stitch part and follow a pattern. We'll talk a lot about reading patterns because that's a challenge area for a lot of folks. And then we will talk about joining it into a bracelet. And then um, part two, we'll also talk about making little findings for your work with some 22 gauge wire. So you can use that as a clasp to finish it. You can use it as a way to hang it as an earring. So we'll demo that too. And again, that's in April, part one and part two. Um, and then we'll finish it off with some gemstones because we're getting into summer and I think gold and gemstones are trending and I just added crystal because I love crystal. So this is just a fun little stitch up. And I'm like an extra little pair of earrings to go with it. There's the earring. It uses a mazonite. So it's a summer precious with gold and shut crystal. Really, um, really stunning look. And we'll also show a new technique, a new to me technique, which was using a finding that is a glue in for turning a bead into a dangle. It's actually a really, really neat little finding. It's a little glue in peg and I'll show tips and tricks for how I do that in class. All right, so that's April. Um, and uh, I just wanna say thank you for everyone to, for, for coming today and seeing our classes and, and for your interest. And thank you for everyone who um, comes regularly and, and cheers me on. I appreciate you guys being here. Lots of hearts for you guys. Um, thank you so much if you make something tag it, uh, hashtag make it with Michaels and hashtag John B. Feel free to join our Facebook group where um, best way to find that is to go to blog.johnb.com. We've got links to it from there. And uh, we all share like uh, all of our creations after the classes. And it's really fun over the weekend to see that. So um, happy beating to you guys. Lots of creativity, hugs, hearts. Have a great weekend. <laughs>